Kevin Rossdale, who's always one of my favorite guests because he makes my job super easy because you've always got stuff going on. We're never like, you know, the idle time, the devil's work, whatever that is. There's no idle time with you. We, no. we chatted a bunch in 2020. You always made time, came on, talked about singles, talked about the kingdom. 2022, we already have what I know is going to be a great new record. The single just dropped, More Than Machines, from The Art of Survival, which we are getting on 10-7. And that's an exciting date here in New Jersey. Do you know why? Do you know why? Um, I don't know. It was my aunt's birthday, so that's a big day for me. But you tell me what's going on in Jersey. You're playing Jersey that night. You're a PNC. Wow. Yeah, the day the record drops. So that's going to be incredible with Alice in Chains and Breaking Benjamin, which is a dynamite bill. So... I hope no one's expecting us to play any new many songs from that. We haven't read them. But um, you're like just caught. It's like just leaving it's like your hand in the cookie jar. You know what I mean? You just got like, play us a new one, some new songs. Uh, we'll play more than the machines twice. Is that cool? <laughs> I think about that, haven't we? Well, well, the song is amazing. Like, it's, it's custom made for live performance. It's a battle cry song. You can hear that, that desperation and that battle cry in the tune. So talk to me a little bit about, about the new tune. Um, it's the last song that uh, I wrote for the record. And, um, you know, I write a bunch of stuff myself. And then sometimes I, you know, collaborate where I, you know, get some music. And, I've, and uh, I got some music from Chris and Eric. And just... It was just at the moment when the world was going upside down with this whole uh, women's rights and Roe versus Wade. And I was thinking, you know, if you're in a band, I mean, it's, it's not like it, it, there's no right or wrong about things. Well, there are, there are how I actually right or wrong. But the point is, is that it's not about um, being like saying, you know, this or you know that. It just is it's just shocking information to me. That was a shocking turn of events. I, I cannot imagine what it's like. For, for women to be told that they are governed by um, by anyone other than themselves. I just think it's just like, I just don't get it. So I'm so appalled by it. And um, and of course, I, you know, that's it. So it's a full stop. I'm meaning that, that people have control of it. In the same way I do. I want to have something done. I want to get, <clears throat> anyway. So, and I wanted to involve that in there. I wanted to write about it and I hadn't found a way. And when that, when I got that music, you know, I was just, just putting the top lines on it and I was like, it gave me the opportunity. So I have the, 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 the piece about the girls and the government and then the next verse is about uh, the climate, which is really hard to get anyone to care about. It's a bit harder to get people to care about. We can't relate. It was like, why is it raining in August? Why is it 107 degrees in January? You know, like as the, as the weather is turning and all these terrible things are happening, thousands of wildfires and all these uh, people might start to wake up. It's quite difficult to get the global concept of that, of, of, of waking up to that. But I certainly saw the reaction to uh, the intrusion on women's bodies uh, as a general consensus around everyone that I knew. No, it's just hard to believe. It's like sort of medieval. So uh, I was really happy to get that in there. And much like all the ones that, are, that work, you know, it came, came out pretty quick um, and just popped out and uh, I'm really lucky. I don't, you know what I mean? I just, I sit there in my studio and I try and make things happen and I just wait until the kind of, it strikes. And that was a, that was a, you know, it was fun to sing. Yeah, you can, I, I, I can feel it. I mean, you can, it, it's a very, mm -hmm. um, evocative song and the emotion is there and you guys performed it at um the uh concert for earth which which happened in portugal that performance yes. was and the and the audience was just so in the pocket with you i saw the video from that performance i know, you know the funniest thing about that i don't know if i should tell you because i'm not going to say it a lot because i'll repeat myself it's the first interview this is the first interview i've done by the way for the with the new single out so there you go um uh, yeah, we never had rehearsed that even. We never played it together. Wow. So we we always sort of fly by the seat of our pants. And being English, I probably rehearse less than, you know, like we, we're not big on rehearsals. Should rehearse more. But then that one. So yeah, we never, we the first time we played it together, we were filmed doing it. So it's very showbiz. Oh, I, I love that, though, because, I mean, there's something that you can't capture again. You know, I've seen bands right. do, like, the storytellers thing, and a director will say, let's do that again. 
And I've actually seen, I think it was Scott Weiland, who's like, nah, I can't, I can't feel what I just felt. I can't do it again. It, you know, it was magic because this is, the, this is the way we did it. So, oh, I love that. That was the first time you performed it. No rehearsal. Love, love, so love it. That's rock once. and roll. That's what it should be about, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes it's nice to be a little bit prepared. I was completely unprepared, but uh, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. is this record going to be um, heavy like The Kingdom? I love oh. when you guys do that. That's what I think that Bush sound is. And I love your working with uh, Eric Ron. He worked on this track. Is he working on the whole record? Because I think yeah, he has this he, great he, synergy. We produced the record um, uh, together and he, um, he came in and was super helpful. He took, I did a bunch of recordings here at my house and uh, you know, I record them in a Neanderthal way. Then I have a, an engineer who puts them together as I sing them and I kind of arrange them like that. Then I took, take them to Eric and um, he, you know, generally kind of goes through the fine tooth comb, makes the drums work for every section. You know, when you write songs, you don't have to make the drums perfect for a section. Once you've begun the song, you just make the song. You can then go back and, you know, make it all sit right. But generally, if you're on a roll, you're on a roll, you want to write the song, you know, the meat of the song. And then when you get into pre-production, that's what it is. So, um, and he's amazing at that. He's so fast and so quick and uh, studio's 10 minutes away. And um, um, it was a really simple process. It was just going down. He just makes everything better. Chris comes in, he makes everything better. Corey comes in and makes everything better. And Nick comes in and makes everything better with great live drums. It's a really, it's a simple process. You know, once the, once the song's there, it's kind of, there's a bit of, definitely it's a really brilliant collaboration with me, um, Chris, and Eric in the way that we sit there and just everyone brings their, their A game and we come out with uh, hopefully the best version of that song. Some songs went through big changes or arrangement changes and some songs didn't because I've done it for some time. So I just love uh, the collaboration of it because it, you can't have it all with one perspective. I used to just, no, no I never collaborated with anyone because no one in the band wanted to. And then now, they're all super eager to, you know what I mean? So it's like, is that balance of doing stuff that I do is natural to me, and then doing stuff where we take on, you know, we just we 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 we, we get into it and we just get the best out of it. And uh, I, I think it's really, I'm really proud of it. Yeah, Eric did last two songs on the last record, The Kingdom and Flowers on a Grave, and then um, and he remixed it, and um, and then this time we made a record with him. You know, it was it was great. You know? Yeah, and also. The Beautiful. There was his, his assistant, Anthony Reed, had this most beautiful dog called Wally, who was on chemotherapy at the time. The whole making the record, and Eric had a brand new dog that he saved from the Korean um, food market. Oh, yeah, right. The meat so trade. That's terrible. Dog over. So, just the foot, he back for two days, and I had the dog sitting on the sofa for like, you know, whatever, three, four weeks. And I had the other, and Wally coming in. Um, and I'd feed, and whenever I come to stew with my dog, I always bring him food, you know, because then you get bored. He's like, all right, give me something to eat. So he's eating. So I bring dog food, food for all the dogs. And then I have the three dogs there, and I've got these beautiful videos of them all sitting down and getting their treats and waiting. And Wally was, had his lovely head uh, cocked to the side. He was a beautiful dog. And when I was in Europe, he passed away. And uh, it's so sad. I mean, I was. I mean, his, his owner must be, you know, Anthony must be devastated. I was really sad. I love that little guy. Yeah, and you're telling so, me the story. I'm like the crazy dog lady, and you're telling me the story right now. And I'm like, literally, like I have, yeah, a, I have the trembling, I have the trembling lip on the bottom. You know, yeah, um, very sad. And yeah, there's, you know, and there's something magical about the spirit of dogs. There's just something, you know, they want nothing from you at all. And I don't know how many entities in life you can actually say that about. So when they're sitting there, whether you're making music or, or just making happiness, you know, there's always something magical about that spirit of a dog. I just, uh, yeah, maybe that's why I could, maybe that's why I connected with this record so much. I don't know. Like I feel, I feel this, feel the spirit, the spirit of me Wally. Chris, me and Chris, you know, we're wolves, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. You can't throw us to the wolves. It doesn't matter because we are wolves. <laughs> now, custom made for live performance, I got to tell you, and I spoke to you about this before, 
these are the best Bush shows in recent years that I've ever seen you guys do. And I've been seeing you guys since the 1990s. You are a monster front man. It has to feel so, you never forget about the people in the back. You know, you're on the, you're on the lawn. When people are coming to PNC, I always tell them, don't be afraid to buy the lawn seats. He cruises out to the lawn. Like you just, um, you just bring it every time the songs are so great this has to be such a good time for you too think about it somebody asked me recently like tell me about the rock format these days like what's rock format the one thing we never stray from is we want songs we need songs we're nothing without songs at rock radio so when i sit through a bush set and i'm watching everything the new songs the songs you know at the mid time of your career the early songs it's like song fest. So when you're on stage and, and every song is a hit and they're new hits and they're classic hits, what does that feel like now, all of these years into your career, to be making some of the best music with the band and, um, and playing some of the best music with your band? You know, thank you so much for that. I, I, um, I think it's beautiful to uh, just to, to be a songwriter, you know, so it was my primary job is to write songs, you know, and it's funny because when I first began, <clears throat> there was a certain way, sometimes, I don't know, I just feel like we've grown, I've grown and, and the whole performance thing is just, it's just like, um, I don't know quite what takes over, but it's, it's sort of a more of an urgency more urgency than I ever realized. I think that when I was really young, I didn't see any horizon. And I just thought, thought well, here I am. Everything was taking me by surprise and I didn't really understand. And then the more I sort of appreciated how like difficult it was to even get going, let alone stay there, the more, the more I realized that how the ante is so up to just stay in there. It just, I just felt like, um, you just, uh, it just, that whole thing of you have to give everything you have, you're as good as your last show, you have to give everything you have because that's who we are. And, and when we get, when we reach that point where it ends, it all ends, I want it to end in flames, not because we just, we just withered away. I want it to be like a, you know, something amazing. So I just am always just trying to um, think of big, like I'm the, the, making it very theatrical, but you know, you want people to just be blown away and transported. And they, they do that by the more I get lost in it, the more chance they get lost in it, you know? And sometimes I, I'm, I'm an idiot, you know, like I just go so nuts because I get so lost in it, so invested in it. And I just believe in it so much. And I just, it's just like this sort of magical world that I get into when the songs start and, you know, during the set that I just, I'm so enthralled by that life that I don't want it to end. So I think, well, if you don't want it to end, you better do it good. <laughs> yeah, amazing. That's I mean, I amazing. About. One of the what great frontmen of all time, you know? Um, you, you can't say, what are the great frontmen of the 90s? No, you're one of the great frontmen in rock and roll today. So congratulations. I mean, uh, right. you just bring it every time. PNC <clears throat> show is on October 7th. What a great bill, too. We've yep. got Bush, Breaking Benjamin, and Allison Chains. And you've got the ladies from Plush opening up. So this is like young hot band, which these girls are amazing. They're like teenagers, and they're just rocking hard rock. So thank you for bringing some of the ladies out on the road with you. It's important that these young, especially female artists, get out there and have the opportunity to be seen. So as a female program director, I thank you for that of course thank you so much I, I it's my honor i mean i think that uh it's essential like you got three dude bands you need you need the the female energy you know um and uh, I'm, I'm so happy because i ask for that a lot i think it's a great balance you know whenever i've done a lot of touring with uh just one other band of like a, like a female vocalist because i think it's you don't want to have i think if you think of a <clears throat> list of experience it's nice with that dynamic, you know, it's a great dynamic when you switch over to um, a girl's voice to a guy's voice, uh, I, you know, and they're gonna have three male voices, which is like, ah, oh, okay. You know, but I like, I like having uh, the girl's voice in there because it's a whole different feel, you know, um, way different feel. Yeah, and they're super cool. I mean, playing their own instruments yeah. and everything, just uh, amazing. And I think about it, I just thought about it when I said song fest, 
think about between Bush, Alice in Chains, Breaking Benjamin, the songs that have been at radio through the years. I mean, you want to talk about Song Fest. This is going to be, I think, like one of the best shows of the year. And we get it on October 7th. And that's the day that The Art of Survival drops. And Gavin Rossdale, it is always such a pleasure. I know you're on a busy touring schedule. Otherwise, I talked to you about, I know you got a food show coming up. And there's just so much stuff going on with you. And it's always such a pleasure to, to get a couple minutes with you. I, I love you. And thank you so much for doing this. More Than Machines, a dynamite track. And uh, we'll see you out on the road, my friends. Oh, thank thanks. you. Thank you so much. All right. See you now. Bye. Bye, Gavin. Bye. Thank you thank so Thank you, much. baby. Love thank you. you. Thank you. Dog, dogs. I love that. Thank you. Bye. I'll see you soon. I'll bring some dogs to PNC. Please do. Many as okay. you like. Bye. Be well. DHA's Reconnect with Lockers is powered by Karis Lock Company, your full-service locksmith, and Dover Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram on Route 46 in Rockaway. <laughs>